There's nothing like fresh eggs in the morning for breakfast. The eggs have been so popular at our place that we've come down to a friend's farm to pick up some more chickens. To add to our ever-expanding collection of birds on the farm, we've now got 20 laying chickens and 20 ducks and over the next couple of weeks we're also going to add some turkeys. The great thing about eggs is that they're a fantastic source of both healthy fat and healthy protein. In fact, they're one of the great uh, natural ways of removing heavy metals from the body, particularly removing mercury from the brain. They're a great source of protein, great source of fat. about cholesterol being bad for your heart and therefore eggs being bad for your heart has now been proven to be a nonsense. Eggs are one of the greatest sources of protein. What's critical when you're having an egg though is what sort of chicken you've got from it. Is the chicken free range? What sort of food has the been, chicken been eating? Does it have access to grass and sun and grubs from the ground? If that's the sort of egg you're having then it's a great food source. It's also critical how you cook the egg. I have my eggs usually raw in the morning in a, in a smoothie as my protein source. The more you expose the cholesterol in the egg and the yolk to heat, the more it is likely that cholesterol gets damaged and oxidized, which can be dangerous. That's why I have mine raw, but poached and boiled is a good way to have it. Obviously breaking the, breaking the yolk and exposing it to a high heat can damage a little bit which is why the, the less you process the egg, the better. So I'm going to take these up and have them for breakfast in the morning. Meantime, I'm going to take these chickens and put them in their new enclosure. They have to be there in, in their enclosure for a few days before you let them out to free range so they get to know that this is home. So I'll start putting them in now. <laughs> then right after we put the chickens to rest, we had a surprise invasion by some fence-busting, very mischievous piglets. You go to chapter one of any cardiology textbook. First chapter is all about what causes heart disease, which is inflammation. Cholesterol doesn't even get a mention because it's not involved. One of the great things you can do about inflammation in your blood vessels is to do what I'm doing now. One, get outside and get some vitamin D, but also get outside and plant some of these. These are organic beetroot seeds. I'm putting them in the garden now. There's three great reasons why you should be outside planting beetroot. The first reason is they're really high in what's called betaine, and betaine is one of the chemicals which, along with some of the B vitamins, reduce homocysteine levels in the body, and homocysteine causes inflammation of the arteries. The second reason is that they're really high in nitrates and nitrates are converted in the body to nitric oxide. Nitric oxide, otherwise known as endothelial derived relaxing factor, is one of the chemicals the body uses to keep the blood vessels dilated and not constricted. So in people with high blood pressure, beetroot juice is one of the greatest things you can ever do. The third reason is that beets are really high in magnesium and magnesium is one of the critical minerals for heart strength. It's also interesting that there's been a study coming out showing that athletes who drink beetroot juice have much uh, greater endurance. Multiple reasons why we should all get outside plant some organic beetroot seeds. Plus, it tastes fantastic. A lot of people talk about green smoothies. The problem with green smoothies, if you're drinking kale and silver beet juice all day, is you can't do it for very long because it doesn't taste that good. One of the great things you can do is vegetable juicing. You can do carrot, celery, beetroot and apple juice every day for the rest of your life because it tastes delicious. And when you're making changes in your life, you've got to make sure the changes that you're making for your health are things that, you, that are sustainable, that you can do every day.
Right, it's time to talk now about the three socio-economic trends out this week that I think are the most important. The first one comes from Richard Russell's latest newsletter. He tries to break down what he thinks are the core problems in today's world. And one of the ones that he sees, one of the main ones, is the rise of China. He talks about China having 1.3 billion people. He talks about China having more monetary reserves than any other country in the world with over $3 trillion in reserve. He talks about China being the greatest producer of gold and the greatest accumulator of gold and the fact that no gold produced in China is able to leave the country. He thinks that ultimately China will back the yuan partially with gold, which will make it the most desired currency in the world. And, quote, in time the yuan will be the world's most wanted currency and therefore the world's new reserve currency. Then, in Bob Chapman's latest international forecaster, he talks about how he believes that what's happening in Greece will eventually happen to the rest of the world. He believes that Greece's only alternative will be to fault from its debt. The whole concept of continuing to give Greece more debt when it can't pay off its existing debt is a failed strategy. Finally, I want to talk about Mike Maloney's latest video. Mike Maloney is Robert Kiyosaki's precious metals advisor. And he talks about two big game changers recently. The first was the desire of Venezuela to have all its gold returned from the Bank of England because it no longer trusts the Bank of England. And the second one is, as we discussed last week, the decision of India to buy oil from Iran with gold rather than dollars. He thinks these two events by themselves have completely changed the outlook for precious metals and he continues to accumulate precious metals over time. And it was an interesting discussion how he uses the gold-silver ratio to decide which one's the best ones for him to buy. Finally, I want to talk about the five most interesting news articles from the medical literature about natural medicine. The first article is about pomegranate juice and the placenta. It's a fantastic study showing that pomegranate juice was able to reduce damage to the placenta. And the researchers concluded that, quote, we speculate that antenatal intake of pomegranate may limit placental injury and thereby may confer protection to the exposed fetus. Second study comes from a study in astronauts from the US where they found that magnesium deficiency causes accelerated shortening of telomeres. Now the longer your telomeres, the, the longer you are likely to live. They conclude that correcting magnesium deficiencies may prolong life. We talked last week about how magnesium is so critical for our health and is almost universally deficient. And in my opinion and, and the opinion of many other clinicians that the best way to get magnesium, of course, is from uh, natural sources, from uh, particularly vegetable juicing. But uh, supplementing with transdermal magnesium uh, is uh, critical for our health. Third study is in a group of uh, people with obsessive compulsive disorder, and they found that almost universally in these people, uh, they're low in zinc, magnesium, and iron. And I talked last week about the role of pyrrole disorder causing accelerated loss of zinc in the urine. Then there's a study out of China where they reviewed the use of progesterone with estrogen and hormone replacement therapy, and they note the critical distinction that all the studies which have used synthetic progestins combined with estrogen showed an increased risk of breast cancer above and beyond the risk of just using estrogen alone. In fact, the Women's Health Initiative the worst outcomes were for women who were on estrogen combined with a synthetic progestogen. Now, the important thing to remember is that synthetic progestogen is completely different to natural progesterone. And it's great to see that this article points out the difference between synthetic progestogen, which is a petrochemical drug designed to be like natural progesterone, but in fact, completely different structurally, and progesterone. And they say that it's likely that natural progesterone will be much safer than synthetic progestogens. Finally, I want to talk about the study out of Korea, which looks at testosterone levels in men with prostate cancer. And once again, it's shown, as have most of the studies always shown, that men who have 
their prostate removed for prostate cancer. If their testosterone levels are low at the time, then it's much more likely that they will get reoccurrence of the cancer and metastatic spread of the cancer. Just another reason why it's so important for men to maximize their testosterone levels. Now we can all do testosterone replacement with time, but the goal is to use testosterone replacement as late as possible and to maintain your own production of your own inherent testosterone for as long as possible. And there are lots of natural ways of maximizing your own testosterone production. All right, that's it for me this week. Uh, we'll talk again next week and I've got a fantastic surprise for you next week for, because next week we have a interview, a short interview with Dr. Roby Mitchell from Amarillo, Texas. I'll talk to him about the key points of his program for maximizing and optimizing health. Until then, it's goodbye from the farm. <laughs>